Hi, welcome along to another video. In the information section, you'll find links to all the articles, etc. that's shown. We'll do the sensible stuff first this time. In a moment, we'll get into Ethiopia, Jamaica, as well as another Dr. Ina Muller paper and some other stuff. And we'll finish up with the silly stuff. So starting with Dr. Ina Muller. So there is a paper on the MIT website in their Global Environmental Politics magazine from May 2020, so about a year ago then. The paper is titled Political Perspectives on Geoengineering, Navigating Problem Definition and Institutional Fit. This is very much worth a read. It's a long read, but it's worth a read. So just to pick out three or four bits from this paper, there's an observation there with a reference from a survey of US-based environmental policy professionals Talati and Higgins in 2019 find a prevalent assessment that governance at the national or international level of geoengineering will be significantly more difficult than at the institutional or scientific level. So at the governmental level it's going to be difficult to introduce regulation on geoengineering. Yes we would like to see it banned but in the worst case scenario at least if it's regulated then people get told what's going on and certain policies have to be followed that we can only hope protect the public so should this be an issue at governmental level no absolutely not because those of you that follow these videos regularly know that the introduction of regulation about climate modification should be no more difficult than regulation that's introduced for weather modification and after the uptick of commercial activities in the united states in the 1950s to do with weather modification activities by the 1960s during the 1960s the majority of US states that had weather modification programs also had introduced regulation to govern that so 21st century governments that are saying oh this is all too difficult to do either at national or international level well they don't have a problem doing it with weather modification they've done it the question we would all ask then of course is what's the issue as you know, you found out from the Scopex experiment, the issue is they need to bypass regulation. That's the issue. If they can bypass regulation, there will be no regulation. If there's no regulation, you can do what you want, such as what was happening with Scopex in Sweden. Bypassed all groups made a deal with the space agency. Small island developing states. Small island states. They're around the world, often concerned with climate change, so to do with concerns expressed by a policy maker representing the small island developing states, SIDS, at a scientific conference, she explained how the 1.5 degree centigrade target had been advocated for by SIDS in the midst of destructive hurricanes. SRM, solar radiation management, however, had never been part of the debate and was unlikely to be supported in her cultural context. Both officials also stated that the lack of capacity in developing countries to deal even with the most immediate threats of climate change made it questionable whether they could substantially engage with something like solar radiation management at all. So the piece there, that it would be unlikely, geoengineering would be unlikely to be supported in her cultural context. This is identical to what the Sami indigenous people in the Arctic region have just said regarding the Scopex experiment. It's not supported. Geoengineering is just not supported. So most of us know when people talk about small island states, it goes in one ear and out the other. And there's a big difference between a small island state and is essentially too small to be heard. There is a big difference between those nations and the UK, the USA. France, Germany, all these so-called G7, G20 nations that do have powerful voices that do get heard. And there's um, a very interesting comment. So it says here, a scientific advisor from the United Kingdom suggested that such legitimacy might lie with the small island states or the least developed countries, which were very serious about climate change. He said he would be very surprised though if the United Kingdom took on this issue itself. So if the UK stood up and said, we're introducing regulation on geoengineering, this is what's happening, this is what's happened until now, listen up public, it's very important, 
this is what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month. People would probably listen. If a small island, say Southeast Asia, stands up and says, hello people, we're introducing regulations to do with this, the chances of you even hearing about it are very small. As far as the UK scientific advisor is concerned, it would be down to a small island state that probably wouldn't get their voice heard, or the least developed countries. Do you hear about Haiti every day? Do you hear about Puerto Rico since their earthquakes? Did they get, they got their 48 hours rolling news, didn't they? But that was that. So countries like Haiti are going to be the ones who suffer the most, and it'll be down to them to make sure that SRM, Solar Radiation Management, is governed correctly globally they're the ones that are going to need to push it through and i think we would all be very surprised if the united kingdom took on the issue itself because we all know that would put it onto the global stage the final piece that i just want to mention from this paper and remember that this is from one year ago and the comment is from three years ago as an interviewed official explained the only reason why the UK government still has a public statement on geoengineering at all is because citizens and civil society organisations sometimes write letters of concern to their politicians. That was from the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy in 2018. It does go on to state about how these concerns are commonly motivated through fears of so-called chemtrails, a conspiracy theory about governmental blah, 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 the usual stuff. And I should say that is the only time that is mentioned. And it's a, in the, the, Dr. Muller writes really neutral papers. That's all I can say is that I've read a few bits of her work and her papers are really neutral. And that statement there is actually a neutral statement because it's true. Whether it's a conspiracy theory or not, that's up to debate, but it's classed as a conspiracy theory. We have to deal with that, that we're classed as conspiracy theorists. You know, name calling never hurt anyone, did it? So it's really important wherever you are, doesn't matter what country you're in, because people are fighting against this in many countries. They need your backup to start with. You might think it's pointless to write to your MP or your politician in a certain department, etc. But the statement's there for you to read the only reason why the UK and this is from a UK government department that has said this an interviewed official right the only reason why the UK government still has a public statement on geoengineering at all is because citizens sometimes write letters of concern to their politicians the civil society organizations bit is debatable and who who's doing what we've been doing I can't think of any civil society organisation that has done what we've been doing. Please, you may think it's pointless. There's boots on the ground, real world activism, and there's virtual activism nowadays as well. It's both worlds. Both worlds exist. You have to utilise both. If you're not fit, you can't go protesting. Well, let your fingers do the talking then. But that's proof to you from the UK, wherever you are in the world, that we are kind of winning our battle and what you read is true we are on our government constantly about this it might not be in the news or anything else but we are on our government constantly about this jamaica hello so it's been a while since we've spoken 2016 was the first time I touched on this in the international weather wars videos playlist you'll find that so in the jamaican gleaner caribbean researchers examine option to limit global warming in the race to delay global warming, which, which presents a significant threat to the Caribbean, small island states, regional researchers have turned their attention to solar geoengineering, and in particular solar radiation management, SRM, as a possible silver lining. I'm sure they didn't mean the silver lining pun, because that's silver iodide weather modification by cloud seeding, isn't it? And not solar radiation management with aluminium, barium, sulfates, salts. So their findings from phase one of the research into solar radiation management has been published. Ah, oh, there you go. 7th of July 2016. So 2016, Jamaica Information Service, Office of the Prime Minister, workshop on scientific mechanism to reduce radiation. So straight away you can see in that headline, 
scientific mechanism to reduce radiation. Most people would look at that and think, okay, that's actually not my area of interest and that area is of no interest to me to look further. A scientific method to reduce radiation, so that's like nuclear bombs, nuclear power stations, Fukushima, that sort of stuff, isn't it? So if you do happen to click on it to find out about this radiation stuff, the University of the West Indies hosted a workshop on July the 7th, 2016 to introduce a scientific mechanism of reducing global solar radiation to local and regional scientists. So there was a workshop where the idea of solar radiation management was introduced to local and regional scientists. Solar radiation management, a bit different from radiation, isn't it? The workshop was held in collaboration with the international non-profit Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative, SRMGI. So if we go onto the SRMGI website, firstly you'll notice the picture at the top. Lovely blue sky, a little bit of cloud in the, in the left there. Beautiful bright sunshine in the right. That's not what a sky looks like when solar radiation management has taken place. That image is a lie. Start from that perspective straight away. That a website, Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative, is using an image on its homepage that is deception. Okay, they're trying to program your brain with a deception because that's not what a solar radiation management stratospheric aerosol injection, geoengineering, a sprayed out sky, a white out sky looks like. Who funds these people? The Carbon War Room is of course Richard Branson's project and the Fund for Innovative Climate and Energy Research which is Ken Caldera's project. Now, I've never seen this in my life. I clicked on the link and apparently I can't connect to this website whilst I'm connected to 20 other websites because my clock is ahead. I decline to update my date and time via their offer. Thank you very much. Ken Caldera and David Keith. Oh, best friends. Another friend, Bill Gates. Grants for research are provided to the University of Calgary from gifts made by Mr. Bill Gates from his personal funds. FICER is not a foundation project and has no relationship with it. That's the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So it receives donation from Mr. Bill Gates' personal funds. Internationally known climate scientist Dr. David Keefe and Dr. Ken Caldera select projects that receive support from the fund. While Mr. Gates provides input from time to time on the fund, Dr. Keefe's and Caldera make final decisions on projects. Some of the funding supports research projects of Drs. Keefe and Caldera and some supports projects outside their institutions. That's from 2012, four years before your situation in Jamaica, where the concepts were introduced to you and where five years later a report is published about how you're going to be going further with that. And keep in mind in 2016 it was stated that this would be good for your economy in Jamaica to get involved with solar radiation management. Typical capitalist attitude, it's good for business but it might not be good for your plants on your mountain tops. I think they need sunshine. So to the wonderful people in Jamaica, please, please, please be aware of what could be going on behind your backs. You know what the system's like when they come into your gardens. Ethiopia, from the Journal of Cameroon, Ethiopia to use cloud seeding technology as second option to fill controversial dam. That's from an official about a week ago. Ethiopia is set to use cloud seeding technology to, in addition to the heavy rains in the coming July and August to undertake the second filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. The country took part in the cloud seeding technology which started recently. So that would be worth keeping an eye on. That dam is a political minefield and if people haven't got enough to deal with with the civil war type situation in northern Ethiopia they're now going to have to be dealing with unpredictable weather modification. To fill a dam, good luck Ethiopia, you deserve better. Romania and Indonesia discussing weather modification technology with Romania. Central Kalimantan governor, we have rainy and dry seasons, this can be arranged. It certainly can. 
How much money have you got? In Jakarta, the Romanian delegation met with the governor of central Kalimantan and discussed cooperation related to weather modification technology. The plan related to the weather modification technology is aimed at supporting the development of food estates and later handling forest and land fires. Rain, dry season, this can be regulated with their technology, he explained. Now why Romania would need to go to Indonesia to get that explained to them is a little bit strange because if you, if you go on the World Meteorological Organization website and you get their register activities reported to them, that's weather modification activities from 15 years ago, you can see that Romania was one of the countries that put a report in. Unfortunately, you can't click on it because since I've covered this, covered this information six weeks ago or so, that link no longer works. But luckily I've got a copy of the report. So Romania's report for 2006 weather modification, yes. Pilot units for hail suppression. The section is hail suppression. And when I just said how much money have you got, for example, 2006, Romania had over half a million dollars. There's the departments that deal with it. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development and the National Meteorological Administration, both based in Bucharest. Okay, the silly stuff. Yahoo News, Australia. I can imagine this journalist has just been told, find out about the Harp conspiracy, write a story about it. So, wild conspiracy accuses secret lab of controlling the weather. But we've known about Harp since it's been built really. So the European Parliament report from January 1999 touched on this in a video about six weeks ago or so. Despite the existing conventions, military research is ongoing on environmental manipulation as a weapon, as demonstrated, for example, by the Alaska-based HARP system. HARP, a weapon system which disrupts the climate. There have been many questions about the lab which is part of the Uni of Alaska Fairbanks, with some even claiming it is controlling the weather, and that some being the European Parliament, as well as the UK Parliament as well, just so you know. And then there's an comments from a futurist, Dr. Richard Haynes. He told Yahoo News Australia, people did not understand the science the facility was studying, raising suspicions and doubts. It's quite an open facility, he said. So if it's quite an open facility, then it's definitely not a secret facility, is it? And if it's quite an open facility, then people are quite able to do their own research into the facility and what it does and what's claimed, such as looking at the European Parliament's papers from 1999 and the concerns raised therein. Dr. Haynes said a conspiracy theory that a human controlled the weather was not plausible. You know, just because you're a master in one thing, that doesn't make you a master in everything else. So, Dr. Hames in Australia, Yahoo News in Australia, is it a conspiracy theory or is it possible that humans are controlling the weather? Well, if we go over to your hydropower company that's based in Queensland in the Snowy Mountains and they're called Snowy Hydro, if we go on their cloud seeding page, which is weather modification, Cloud seeding enhances snowfall. So just so you know, cloud seeding is done by humans. We'll leave that there this week. If there are people from Jamaica and Ethiopia still watching, um, keep an eye on your skies. Hugs and love to you. Don't even consider giving up. See you next time.